sometimes at noon, sometimes at night. God brings people across your path that have individual issues that may not be your issue, but may be something that you don't have an understanding of, but God does. And God is the one who is able to touch them in such a way that maybe you may not have encountered this in your life, but he may be using something in your life to touch that other person. It will be like a bridge to walk over in order to meet that person. I'm told that there are people that have such a poor self-esteem that they don't love themselves. And so some theologians or even some counselors have said that you need to learn to love yourself so that you can love others. Well, I frankly don't buy that. I think that's actually a pile of doo-doo. You know, one of those things that, you know, kind of stink, you know, and it's stinking, thinking, because I don't really think that we need to learn to love ourselves, but we need to love like God loves us. In other words, God decided that we, me, was valuable enough to him that he would die for me. So I don't think that I need to build my self-esteem by loving myself. I think I need to love me as God loves me. And the fact that God loves me means that it's pretty important to him. So if I see it from his perspective, then I think that the reality of having a better God esteem is always in his hands and not mine. Because if I esteem myself greater than I am, which is really, in me there dwelleth no good thing, and the heart is deceitfully wicked and perverse above all things, and that you know the tongue is an unruly member and it can't be controlled, then I kind of know that, guess what? I'm not so good, but if I accept the fact that God loves me, then my esteem is treated as God's way of viewing me. He esteems me as being valuable because of what his son has done. Then I look at my self-esteem as God's way of esteeming his personal choice upon me because if he hadn't died for every single individual in the world he wouldn't have died for anyone but he died for the entire world that there would be an opportunity for every single individual that's alive and have ever lived to have accepted his son for salvation because according to Romans we're told that every man at some point in time has known God but has changed the image of the incorruptible God into the image of the corruptible man so somewhere at some point in time God meets every individual in some way somehow in some means now, only a God of love could do that, and only a God of love would choose to do that, because any other God would have said, hey, forget it, man, you're on your own. Now, today I read in this study, you know, that love yourself so that you can love others, and I don't see it that way, and I know that the Bible doesn't say it that way, you know, and so sometimes when I read things, you know, that are from people that have had either poor self-esteem or have been into spiritual warfare they often get into this whole teaching idea somehow about you got to love yourself you know and you got to tell yourself I love you I love you I love you and you know they just get a little kind of like to me <laughs> I don't love me I love what God is doing in me and he is creating in me the image of his incorruptible son and I love what God is doing to me so I love that I love that God chose me. I love that God fills me. I love that God is in me. That part of me, I do love. But as far as the rest is concerned, hey, you know what? It's a pile of flesh. And it was born in sin, conceived in sin, and will die in sin. So I don't love that. I don't get so wrapped up, you know, into some kind of worldly appreciation of myself. Even if I may have needed, at some point in time, a temporary solution to recognize God's love for me. Now may the God of peace himself grant you his peace, the peace of his kingdom at all times and in all ways, under all circumstances, conditions, and in whatever that comes. 1 Thessalonians 3.16 The Bible says to love your neighbor as yourself. Luke 10.27 The key is to love yourself. And in this I understand the point. But the point really is that Bible kind of implies you already love yourself, whether you can admit it or not. Every person has a certain amount of self-love. God's love is selfless. 
And so when we learn to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow Jesus, we learn to crucify the self that there might be the God part of us, God in us that would love others. You won't enjoy your day until you learn to accept and enjoy yourself. Because you have to eat with yourself, sleep with yourself, and be with yourself all day. A certain amount of self-hatred, they say, that is a mental attribute of a mental disease that a person has a problem with. I see it more as a lack of God in their life and God's presence is not there loving on them as the way that he created them to be and that if they would choose to serve the Lord our God that he would reveal himself to them and they would experience love for the first time of God's love being poured out upon them. So I don't necessarily always agree with certain counselors and some of the things that they've gone through and the way that they approach it, but I do agree with the scriptures that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if God so loved the world in that way, then I can accept God God's love for me and it's that love that draweth men to repentance and so that love of God from him to me will change me and cause me to love that which he has done in me and he is creating me into being something I never was before so being born again not of the flesh but of the spirit I see the reality of love for what God has created me into becoming so that way I don't love myself I love God in me until you are happy with yourself and all that, then you... Until you are happy with who you are and where you are in life, you will never learn to love others or get to where you want to be. Technically, if you trust in the Lord with all your heart, leaning not in your own understanding and all your ways acknowledging Him and letting Him direct your path, you'll see that where He directs you and as He instructs you, you'll appreciate that with which He has done in you and you'll be able to touch those lives to love them. It's not a question of loving yourself first. That's just a theological premise that some people have gotten carried away into, and now they made it an obsession. And most Americans love themselves. I mean, it's pretty easy to, and obvious to see that. Nobody has actually hated themselves. They say they do, but the reality is they still love themselves in some way. It may be a reverse, kind of messed up way that Satan has kind of deceived them. But once the love of God comes upon a life, you see that light of God shine upon their their soul and it becomes like the plants that turn towards the sun. They feel that love and they feel that forgiveness and they feel that mercy and immediately respond to it and they change. The love of God draws men to turning to Him and they immediately turn from where they were to where God wants them to be, which is right where they are. Don't get down on yourself about everything you didn't do right yesterday. Today is a new day. Learn to love your life right now and right where you are. Say, I'm grateful for, to be a child of God, redeemed and made righteous in His eyes. I'm going to enjoy myself all day long. And that's the reality of it, is that God is at work both to will and to do with His good pleasure. So the point isn't just one of loving yourself, but loving what God is doing in you. And that's how we can love others, because of what God has done in us. You can't love yourself much less love any other person. You can't love your enemies and you can't love your friends. You can't love your spouse and you can't love yourself without God in you because God is love. Without God it is impossible to please Him. Without faith it is impossible to please Him. Without God being in you, you cannot do what God would have you to do. But when God is in you, man it is impossible. But with God, <laughs> all things are possible.